Assalamu alaikum, Ramadan Mubarak. I'm so excited about doing this video. I've literally been wanting to do it, especially as we were drawing closer to Ramadan. But I didn't really have the time to just sit down and make the video. But now I'm in a situation where I'm actually very quiet. <laughs> There's not a lot going on and I can talk about it. So basically, I'm not taking part in Ramadan this year. The people who were following me last year kind of know that I have an eating disorder and I wasn't able to take part in last year's Ramadan. This year is very similar in the sense that I'm not able to take part in Ramadan, but I'm going to be dealing with it differently because I think I did so much things last year that I didn't actually get to enjoy Ramadan in terms of my own spiritual growth and my connection with Allah. And I think a lot of that came down to the fact that I felt really guilty about not taking part in Ramadan and I felt like I had to do so much more to make up for the fact that I won't be fasting. So one of the ways that I tried to basically take part in Ramadan last year was by doing a lot of voluntary work and a lot of fundraising. There's nothing wrong with that and I think that's an amazing way to actually take part in Ramadan if you're not fasting. However, I think I overdid it in terms of commitment. I tried to commit to more than one charity. I tried to volunteer a lot of my time and it ended up making it less about my spiritual growth and more about making myself not feel bad about the fact that I'm not fasting. What I'm doing this year is actually taking the time to do my daily prayers this is the month of the Quran, so I really want to take my time this month to actually study and learn and apply so that the rest of the year I'm able to volunteer more of my time and to also function better as a human because there's so many ups and downs in life and for us Muslims, Islam is a way of life and sort of being grounded in something beyond ourselves allows us to be able to face those difficulties on a daily basis with a lot more strength and a lot more patience. I also want to point out that like we still have so many people in the community that have this mentality of if you're not feeling well, if you're not medically 100% fit, you should still take part in Ramadan. I think it comes from this idea that our health is in Allah's hands and we should take that risk. But there's certain illnesses that I feel like prevent you from being able to actually take part in an actual fast. One of those is eating disorders, but there's so many more like diabetes, etc. And as a community, we kind of need to understand that Allah has actually permitted certain individuals from not taking part in the fast. And I really want to share that verse with everyone. A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصم ومن كان مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر. The verse goes on, but I really wanted to share that specific section because it really talks about Ramadan in the sense that Ramadan is a special month and that Muslims are to fast during that month, but it also permits those who are traveling and are unwell to not take part in Ramadan. And I think when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala permits you to not do something because of your health or because you're traveling that is to make it easier for you so Allah himself knows that he has prescribed fasting for his people but there's certain people who can't actually take part in that and as a community we shouldn't then force people to take part because of our own experiences or how we think the religion should be yes of course our health is in Allah's hands and Allah himself however has permitted those who can't fast to not fast. And I think as a community, we need to understand that and stop shaming people who can't take part in Ramadan. Lastly, I wanna end with different things that you can actually do in Ramadan if you're actually not fasting. Some of that is 
reading the Quran and really understanding it. It's not about how many chapters and verses, etc. you can actually cover throughout the month of Ramadan. It's actually more about how many you can learn and implement in your day-to-day -day life. If you focus on that and you make that your journey in Ramadan, inshallah, you will be able to leave Ramadan with something more than you came in with. And also, charity is a big thing. If you have even like a little bit here and there, you can donate. If you have the energy and the time to actually volunteer, volunteer your time for those in need, inshallah, Allah will reward you for that. So that's kind of everything that I wanted to say. I really wanted to raise awareness around this issue of those who can't fast and just kind of point people into little directions in terms of their spiritual growth and being able to still take advantage of Ramadan even if they're not fasting. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. I'm really open about like my eating disorder. I can't give tips on what you should and you shouldn't do. I feel like you should really speak to your own medical team if you have an eating disorder because they'll be able to advise every individual on their own specific needs but in general I can kind of like have a conversation around it. Enjoy the rest of your Ramadan and have a blessed month.